Hello all, my name is Karsten. I'm uh, working with the Free Software Foundation Europe. And I would like to talk to you today about access to knowledge, um, especially about copyright, patents, and politics at the World Intellectual Property Organization. Uh, please let me know if I'm talking too quickly, if you have trouble understanding me. Um, well, just uh, an overview of the contents of this talk. The first part, we could say, is a bit theoretical. What is access to knowledge? What is this formula that's been showing up here and there during the last year or so? Um, why is it important? What are the concerns I have with the term intellectual property? And um, what could a treaty on access to knowledge be good for, and what should it lo look like? Then in the second part, um, I'll talk about the work that a lot of NGOs, including the Free Software Foundation Europe, uh, do at the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. First, I'll give you a short introduction to WIPO, what it is and what it does. Then, um, what opportunities WIPO holds for promoting access to knowledge or on another, from another perspective, what obstacles it presents on the same topic. Well, then I'll uh, present a first step, which has been taken at WIPO, the development agenda. And uh, finally, say a few words about what uh, my organization, FSF Europe, is doing at WIPO. There will be opportunities for questions, well, um, in general, after the, after the talk, I'd appreciate that if you could just hold it that long. Um, but after the first part, I'll draw a short summary, and then if, there's, um, if there are things that you want me to explain a bit more, then I'll gladly do that. Okay, so let's go. What is access to knowledge? What is knowledge, anyway? We could say that knowledge is any cultural technique, anything that uh, humans do to... Uh, bring about a culture. Music is a sort of knowledge. Music brings people together. together. Medicine is knowledge. It helps people cure people. It helps us sustain ourselves in the physical sense. Science, of course, is knowledge. I don't think any explanation is needed here. And uh, software is knowledge as well. Software, as most of you probably better, know better than I do, is really just knowledge about processes. You take, if, if you want to write a program to uh, solve a certain problem, to take care of a certain task, what you do is you deconstruct this task into steps so simple that even something as stupid as a computer can perform them. And then you describe these steps in a manner that um, the computer understands. That is what programmers do. So um, software is knowledge about processes. Thanks to digital technology, uh, it's very easy to distribute knowledge. Um, if you have something to say to the world, just put it up on the web. If you're looking for something, you look it up on the web. Beautiful. That's an opportunity. Though uh, some treat it as a threat. I'll, uh, we'll get to that. The access, access to knowledge really is something, you could say it's a perspective a perspective where you value knowledge and access to knowledge and uh, everyone's ability to learn over the protection of individuals, or mostly companies really, um, to profit from a monopoly on knowledge. Why is access to knowledge important for culture and development? Well, as for culture, without, without knowing things, without knowledge about, about the culture, it's impossible to take part in one. Uh, reading and writing is a very basic example here. Someone who cannot read or write, at least in our Western societies, uh, does have indeed a serious problem. I'm sure you will agree here. Literature also is something. It, it carries the ideas we, we have about our culture. It um, communicates uh, ideas between all of us. And it's a, so, literature is really a sort of discussion. Software understanding software, being able to use software, maybe being, even being able to write software, is also becoming ever more important. 
you run into software all the time. This is not actually a phone. It's a computer. It just acts like it's a phone. And uh, by the way, I should turn it off, I see. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so um, software, we encounter software in places where our parents probably never would have thought about there being a computer. Well, why is it important to be able to exchange all these things? Why, why is it important to be able to exchange software, literature, the knowledge about reading and writing? Um, because our culture grows on a common ground of knowledge. Because to create, first you have to receive. Because to write a book, you have to read perhaps a hundred books before. Because to write a program, you have to look at a lot of program code. I'm not a programmer myself. My background, like Mike is, the previous speaker, is in cultural sciences. The only thing I can do is very basic HTML. But what little I learned here is due to looking at other people's code. So um, reading books about HTML never took me very far. That is why restrictions on access to knowledge hurt us all, even if it's only individuals being restricted, because these restrictions make the afflicted individuals less productive. They cannot contribute as uh, their potential would perhaps allow them to. Um, this means for those individuals less personal freedom because probably every one of you has a book, for example, that has been very important to your, to your growth as you were young or maybe you even, you're even reading a book in, during these days which is important to you. Um, so if you have, wouldn't have that, if you wouldn't have had or wouldn't have access to that book, you'd probably be lacking something. Um, but for all of us, as a collective, as a culture, restrictions on knowledge, restrictions on access to knowledge, mean um, that if, as in, if all the individuals making up the collective do not reach their full potential because of these restrictions, then we as a society, as a whole, as a collective, we will not reach our full potential, be it in the cultural realm or in the economic area. Uh, much the same goes for development, although here, access to knowledge can quickly turn deadly. Um, developing countries suffer a lot more from access restrictions than we do, because um, in the Western world, in the rich countries, in case of doubt, we can buy our way out of restrictions. We can buy a license, we can buy a book. That is something that many people in developing countries just can't. It's not an option for them because they have to buy food first. Um, so, for example, even if a developing country or a least developed country manages to print a school book, um, manages to set up this rather complex process, to would manage to distribute the books through the schools, they might run into trouble when it comes to paying the licenses for the educational texts they want to use. They might, there might just not be the money for this kind of thing. Even more dramatic and even more obvious um, is the lack of money in the area of medicines. If uh, the best example really is AIDS medication, um, where there is still an ongoing struggle between the pharma companies and uh, NGOs helping people, most of all Medicine Sans Frontieres, excuse my French, Doctors Without Borders, um, who are running an access to essential medicines campaign. Because, for example, maybe if you've run into this, in the, at the end of the 90s, 90s, South Africa realized that they were suffering from a most severe AIDS problem. And um, what they didn't have the money for was buying the, the medicine to at least, while, AIDS, while, while you cannot cure AIDS, you can sort of uh, soften the impact. And um, so South Africa went ahead and said, well, you know, there's AIDS medication, but it's patented. And uh, the pharma companies are charging way too much money for the, for the license to use the patent. So what we do, we, have, we declare a national emergency and go ahead um, producing this regardless of the patent. Um, that's what they did. And the pharma companies went to court and sued South Africa. They eventually had to pull back the suit um, because of international pressure, because of the pressure that Doctors Without Borders and other NGOs created. 
so, um, you know, medicines can be produced very cheaply. It's not, it's not hard to make a pill. What's hard is to know what to put into it and how, how exactly to manufacture this active component. And that's what the patent is on. So um, if you're able to produce and distribute medicine at marginal cost, meaning only the cost of producing the pill, not the cost of the license, you have, is, or you as a developing country, no, developing countries do have great advantages then. Um, so it's easy to see why these restrictions on access to knowledge in the educational realm or in the medical realm, I'm just using these examples here, how they block development. Sick people can't work. Uneducated people are not going to be very productive. Um, another point is that what is good for developing countries usually helps us too. If it's easy to uh, get permission to use copyrighted material in education, uh, education will let it get a lot more interesting and rich, even here, because our schools do not have um, too much money either. It's not as bad as in Zimbabwe, say, but uh, still. So um, generous fair use, like what, this is what it's called if you're given um, sort of leave from copyright, if you're allowed something uh, to use something even though it's copyrighted. And alternative licensing models, like the uh, GNU licenses, the GPL, or Creative Commons licenses, are potentially very useful because they permit us all to access knowledge. But how is access to knowledge regulated? Um, those of you, who, who has heard the two preceding lectures? Just raise your hands, please. Okay. Now I'll just, I'll just do a short introduction then. Um, so I'm talking about mainly two modes of regulation on access to knowledge here. One is copyright or author's rights, Urheberrecht. Uh, the other would be patents, because that's, uh, the ones, those, are, those are the ones that have the most impact. Copyrights, to start with, go uh, for text, for music, for software, and um, give economic and sometimes moral privileges to the creator of a work or to the copyright holder who has bought the copyright from the creator, which is much more often the case. For example, music companies buy the copyright from the creators of the music and then hold the copyrights. That is why I'm going to refer to them as rights holders. Uh, copyright protection now lasts in Germany 70 years. In the United States, it's author's life plus 70 years. So you create, if an author creates something at, thir at 30 today and uh, goes on to live for another 50 years um, and then has 70 years copyright protection, that makes 120 years. That's pretty impressive especially regarding the fact that copyright is intended um, as an incentive for people to produce. So what good is it to give an incentive to produce to a dead person? I'm not going to produce anything if I'm dead, no matter how much you pay me. Um, for patents, it's not, it's not quite as dramatic. Patents refer to technical inventions. Um, such as machines using the forces of nature that was in the, in the software patent debate that got very heated this summer, uh, an important formula. Um, patents confer exclusivity on an invention in exchange for publishing how this invention works. Then the person holding the patent, or the company usually holding the patent, because have, asking for a patent and administering one, especially enforcing one, is very expensive. So it's usually a company behind those. Um, gets 20 years to profit from this exclusively. Afterwards, it's public domain, like, like copyrighted things that, uh, where, where the protection has run out. They go into the public domain, it's called. They're accessible to anyone then, and anyone can use them. So, why haven't I been using the term intellectual property so far? Because I don't like it. Because I think it's a propaganda term, really. Um, I especially dislike the property part in intellectual property because it simply ideas, knowledge,